This is so good. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna eat this just by itself. Wow. Mm. -mm. Mm. Mm. What's for dinner? Hey everyone, I'm Chef Z and welcome back to my channel, Chef Z Cooks. Today I have a super exciting video. I'm going to be showing you how to make moro de guandule in an Instapot because yes, it is totally possible to make this absolute delicious rice in an Instapot or a pressure cooker because honestly, they're one and the same. And I will be walking you through all the settings and all my tips and tricks just in case you don't have an Instapot, you can definitely still make this rice. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the holidays are around the corner and I run out of room on my stove fairly quickly. So the fact that I can make this rice, and let's face it, this is one of the most important dishes for any Hispanic holiday or get together. And the fact that I figured out how to make it using a kitchen appliance where I can free up some space for other yummy dishes on my stove is <gasps> clutch. Okay, I'm so excited to share this dish with you guys. Now, before we get started, I am curious to know what is your must have dish for the holidays? Like what is that dish that cannot go missing or else your family may riot? For me and my family, it's definitely this moro de guandule and perni. Let's go ahead and get started. Making moro de guandule in an Instapot or a regular pressure cooker is actually really easy and it's also very similar to making it on the stove. However, you do have to tweak a few things here and there, but don't worry because I'll definitely walk you through all of that. So first things first, we wanna set our device to saute on high and my Instapot will automatically default to 30 minutes. Now, regardless of the pressure cooker that you have, you just wanna warm it up. And once it comes up to temperature, we're going to add some oil and then we're going to saute our onions and our peppers. And it's really important that you dice the onions and peppers on the smaller side because they will release their own juices and their own water. And we wanna control the amount of moisture that goes into the rice, especially when using this method to cook it. Now I've added some fresh garlic along with some salt and pepper just to help those veggies sweat. And we're going to saute them for a few minutes until they become nice and translucent. Now, just for reference, I used about a half of a white onion and a half of a cubanelle pepper, but you can definitely use bell peppers if that's what you have on hand. We're now going to add the pigeon peas, which are guandules, and you can use guandules that you yourself have softened in the pressure cooker beforehand, or you can use the canned version. Honestly, both work about the same. And after we've added the guandula, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some more seasoning. So we're going to add some sazon con achiote. I'm going to add some chicken bouillon cube, but you can definitely use kosher salt instead if you wanna keep this as a vegan meal. We're also going to add some Dominican oregano for that wonderful Dominican flavor. And we're going to mix everything until it's well combined. Now you'll notice that these steps are very similar to how we make it on the stove, except things are now going to change just a little bit. So we're going to add the tomato paste. And whenever you're making it on the stove, you can actually use tomato paste or tomato sauce. But when making this in an Instapot or a pressure cooker, I highly recommend that you use tomato paste instead because again, we wanna limit the amount of moisture that goes into this. And you also wanna make sure to work in that tomato paste really well. We're now going to add our long grain white rice. Now this is also a different step than when you make it onto the stove. Typically I add the water first, but whenever I'm making it in the Instapot, I actually like to mix the rice together with all of those seasonings and the guandula because I wanna very slightly toast the rice because it's really going to take in all of that awesome flavor. We're now going to add in some water and I'm using a one to one ratio. And what that means is that I'm using equal parts water to equal parts rice. And listen to me, you definitely wanna use the one to one ratio 
otherwise your rice may come out a little bit on the mushy side if you add extra water now hey if you do like some mushy rice and you like your moto a little bit on the fluffier side go ahead and add a little extra water but the pressure cooker will draw out water from all the onions and the peppers that we've already added. I'm now going to add some fresh cilantro and I wanna make sure just to center it because this is actually going to become really soft. So I wanna make it easy to pick it out later. We're now going to close the lid on our Instapot and put it in the seal position. And now I'm actually going to turn it off, saute mode and turn on pressure cook mode. So I'm gonna pressure cook it on high for five minutes. And after the five minutes, I'm actually going to let it slow release for an additional 10 minutes. So after the five minutes, you just wanna leave your pressure cooker alone and let it do its thing for 10 minutes. And then after those 10 minutes are up, we're actually going to turn off our Instapot or in your situation, it may be your pressure cooker. And you wanna be really careful because you now want to release the pressure by opening the valve. You do not, and I repeat, you do not wanna just open up your device without releasing the pressure. Now, as you can see, the rice looks beautiful. However, we have to zhuzh it up just a little bit. So I like to go in and I like to take out the cilantro because the pressure cooker has actually turned the cilantro into mush. So it's not gonna be pleasant eating it. And that's why I like to make sure that I put it in the center so I know exactly where it is to make it easy to pick it out. And now we're going to fluff up the rice. And as you can see, the rice came out absolutely perfect. And I made about two and a half cups of white rice. And this is roughly going to feed anywhere between six to eight people. And honestly, this took me about 20 minutes in total to cook. Can you imagine making a moro de guandule that quickly and that easily? So there you guys have it. That's a my recipe for an easy moro de guandule in an Instapot. Comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see me make next. And until next week, I'm Chef Z. Y buen provecho. Mm. Guys, this rice is so good. Look, it came out beautiful, perfect, fluffy, tasty, all in an Instapot. Like, guys, comment down below. Let me know if you try it. Definitely tag me and send me pictures. Do not forget to come back next week when I have an all new video. Click that bell so that you're notified. Join the Chef Z family. And if you need some inspiration on what to cook next, go ahead and click right here.